she was a happy, kind person and beautiful. Compassionate. And she had a heart of gold, very loving, hugging. I don't know, I'm a sad about her. You know, I used to do a lot of the cooking, being the oldest. And she would, uh, she would say, the bitch, a chamid laga let a chiru asche. She'd say, give me some bannock with a little bit of syrup on it. She liked um, mechanic too, she helped her uh, stepdad pull, pull out motors, put them back, other ones in, and remove transmissions, put other ones in. She, she was a good mechanic. The things that we would do together would was um, go to the mall, we'd go shopping. We used to visit and we used to just drink tea and we used to just laugh and it was a good belly laugh with a cute little chuckle in it I don't know we'd reminisce about when we were kids when she was younger and those were good times there'd be times too though that we'd get into our disagreements we would uh, get real angry with one another but we would apologize to one another and just I don't know, it would just make us close. There is a song she always used to play. It's called, uh... Oh, I can't make it now. Something about picture. Put your picture away? No. How does that go? Put your picture away. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Kid Rock and mm -hmm. there's a man and a woman and there's mm -hmm. and like I put your picture away. Yes. I can't be here with him. Laying next, next to you. Yes, that's the one. That's the one she loved. We were very poor growing up as as a family. Uh, my parents struggled, struggled immensely with alcoholism. And as a result, uh, we were neglected. My sister still had a reservoir of strength and it kept her alive through many years in foster care. There too she suffered. As did the whole family. My mom had called me. She was crying and she had told me she was HIV positive and that was like the turning point in our relationship that we had had. A bad relationship um, all along because of the drinking. And uh, that was the turning point where I knew I was losing her. Um, we kept in contact every week, two weeks or so. And then finally, it was about the middle of May or June, and I hadn't heard anything from her. And I remember calling, and I left messages, and she didn't call. And I knew in my heart, I knew in my gut that something was not right. She went to a Bible camp, and... Uh, she wasn't feeling very well, so she wanted to go home. And uh, she phoned around for a ride, but nobody was able to meet her. So she, um, she asked the supervisors if they could drive her home, and they couldn't do that either. So she decided to hitchhike. She had disappeared. Well, of course, she hadn't returned home for a number of days. And efforts were made to find her. The last person to see her, seen her talking to a man in a little red car. He made some racial comments to, to them which started everything. And he kept on provoking them and taunting them. And they seen him reach out, reach his, his arm out the window and grab onto her, her um, 
like her jacket, like the front of her jacket, and then he drove away, which of course she stumbled and he dragged her a bit, and then he let her go, and she went under the back tire, and he drove away. By that time, my sister and them got there. She was already gone. She was laying on a pool of blood. There was uh, one stab wound right on her nipple. Right here, and then another stab wound under her breast over here. And then another one on the side over here. The one under here uh, hit the main artery to her heart. There was no investigation done into the cause of her death. Her autopsy report says that um, there's nothing anatomical or nothing toxicological that would warrant her death. Uh, the Toronto Police Service has not, didn't take the initiative after the autopsy report was completed to find out why, why she passed away. It came to, to trial and he was found not guilty of manslaughter and was charged with uh, dangerous driving causing death, which he only received a three-year sentence. Just to accept that is... is um, it's very hard to do. <laughs> because I, f I feel that justice hasn't been served. If she had been a blonde haired college student, you can bet there would have been an investigation into that. I know that for a fact. I've always heard of racism, but but I don't know. It's it's something else when it happens to you. Knowing that she was just pushed off as paperwork when she had two children, a husband and a granddaughter. It really gets to me. It's hard and I get angry. I get angry. When the media refers to my sister as a prostitute, a known prostitute, was found in a ditch in a rural road near Sherwood Park. Cause of death was never established and police believe her body was dumped. That's not my sister. That is not my sister. That's not her total self. Our lives were changed, so for the rest of our lives that night. It still hurts. Still mention it. I don't know, I miss her. <laughs> but I keep my picture up on my TV every day. And I got my candle that's beside it all the time. And my buffalo that my auntie gave me from when we had our healing circle. I'm reminded of Cindy every day. Just the minute I wake up, her kids are here. The little kids still talk about it, that the younger ones, especially the three-year-old girl, she still says, know what cook on my mom, my dad tapped my mom. And the little boys taking it out in anger. Last year, I had told the kids, her kids, that their mom's birthday was today, and they wanted, her daughter says, oh, can, can we have a party? Not really understanding. I went and got some cupcakes and they put one candle in the cupcake each and I lit the candles and I put 
this picture on the table and we just kind of sat around it. They blew out their candles and, you know, they wanted to sing happy birthday. And so they did that and uh, they ate their cupcakes. Her birthday's coming up. They want to they wanna do that again. So maybe I'll, I'll kind of make it a a thing each year until they until they don't want to do it anymore I guess There's never been a, a more fitting song, I think. Even when she was alive, the song, when I heard it, it means more to me now that she's gone. And this is actually the first time that I sang it. second but I pray every day that the grandfathers and the grandmothers would look after her and I believe that she is in the creator's care today a lot of praying we've got got come this far God helping us to to cope. I just want to say that I really want to honor my sisters today. And what I am sharing is not for me. It's not for anything else, but it's it's for them and it's for all the other women as well whose lives have been taken. But it feels good to do this and, and with our healing circle and meeting the people from across Canada and know that I'm not by myself and hopefully together we can have somebody not have to deal with this in the future. Because the damage it does, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have a support system. I have a lot of people that care about me. If some people don't have that. Um, my mom didn't, or she didn't think she did. She did. But hopefully nobody will have to go through it again. That's all.